Hello there friends. I've been wanting to do this video for you for quite a while because I know a lot of you have asked over and over again about my health, what's going on in my life. And I just thought that I'd sit down, do my makeup today and just tell you the whole big ball of everything that's been going on because there's so much to go through. In front of me, I have a lot of new makeup. Some of it's new to me. Some of it is a new release. Most of it's just new to me type stuff, but I'll make sure that everything's listed and linked below. Also, the top I have on is just a plain t-shirt. So I'll make sure that that is listed and linked below too. I do have a necklace on, which I normally don't when I'm preparing to do my makeup, but I have a necklace on. I'll make sure that's linked. My fingernails are so cute right now. They're purple glitter with the white tips. I love them. They're the press-ons. So I'll make sure that is listed and linked. Everything will be listed and linked below. So let's just get started. I'm not going to talk too much about what I'm using or what I'm doing. I will just be talking about life and yeah, let's get into that right now. So first, I hope that all of my regular subscribers are doing well. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And also, if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. And if everybody hits the like button, this gets out to more people. So if you would do that, I would really appreciate that as well. So I'm going to start out with my primer for my face. I've done my eyebrows and put on some eyeshadow shadow primer. This is the one size secure the blur and I'm just going to put this out. I've heard really good things about this. So I want to backtrack. Let's go back clear back to when I was diagnosed with POTS. Oh, was that three years ago? I can't even remember how long ago that was. So diagnosed with POTS, which is postural orthostatic tachycardi syndrome when you're sympathetic and your autonomic nervous system don't talk to each other and you stand up and you feel lightheaded like you're going to pass out it also makes you so tired so all of you that already know i have fibromyalgia um that makes you tired anyway so now i had this to deal with as well about the same time i developed left bundle branch block in my heart and that is where the nerves don't let the heart beat the correct way. So I have a little bit of an arrhythmia there. This is the new tart tartlet palette and it is called Reflections. Absolutely gorgeous on all of the colors. And when I developed that, I just noticed that my energy had gone down. Now, if you don't know even further back than that, I did in 2019, July of 2019, have weight loss surgery. I had gastric bypass. And in that gastric bypass, right after I did have a bowel blockage that I had to go in and be operated on again for, that was just a simple complication of the surgery. And uh, afterwards, I found out that a lot of people get that same complication. So fast forward to where I'm talking about, and I had lost about, oh, I'd say about 115 pounds, which is a big deal, yes, but um, I still needed to lose quite a bit of weight. I got left bundle branch block and POTS from COVID. And I've had COVID three times and still kicking. So hopefully the fourth time won't do me in. So in finding all of that out, going through all of that, my energy just tanked, had a really bad year in 2023. And many of you also know that early in 2023, I had skin removal surgery and then they did something that wasn't quite right on me. And I had to have a revision uh, three months or four months after that. And so they cut you all the way around the circumference of your body and then pull your skin together when you have that much skin that's loose. That was the worst surgery I've ever had. It was the hardest to recover from. I would not tell anybody to do that surgery. As far as the gastric bypass, that was a breeze compared to skin removal surgery. That was tough, really, really tough. And not for the faint of heart at all. So after skin removal surgery, and I was pretty much doing better. In November, I got this pain in my abdomen that scared the bejesus out of me. I was so afraid. It was one of the most intense pains. It felt like a snake had wrapped itself around my middle and that it was just giving me the, the python death grip. And that pain was so intense that I finally woke my husband up. That it had gone on for like two days. I finally woke my husband up in the middle of the night. I said, please take me to the doctor. And I was in some serious pain. Well, first thing they did, they come in. They tell me that they um, want to do CAT scan, MRI, 
blood work, all of the stuff. So they did it all. Blood work came back fine. Um, the CAT scan didn't show anything, but they when they did the MRI, they came back in and said, you have a mass in your liver. And I'm like, okay. And she said, and this is the doctor, and she said, we think it's cancer. And so the next few hours of, you know, madly calling my family and trying to get people there to be with me. Of course, my husband was already there, but my son that lives here, he wanted to come. And then of course my sister, and it was just scary. It was so, so scary. And I, I couldn't believe I had liver cancer. So as I'm laying there and contemplating, okay, what happens next? And, you know, thinking, well, okay, cancer isn't like an automatic death sentence. They've come great strides. And I just was, you know, trying to think positive and everything. And they did an MRI again right after that. And then they had a tech, a specific specialist come in to read my MRI. And she came in, it was about four hours later, she came in. That same doctor said, okay, uh, we need to backtrack a little bit. What has happened is you actually have a blood clot in your portal vein, which looks like a mass, but on further inspection of it, it was not. It was actually just this blood clot that was completely occlusive in the portal vein, not allowing the portal vein to feed back to the heart or go out of the heart. Can't remember which way it goes. Anyway, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I was just in absolute shock. I could not believe, well, I didn't have cancer, but what did this whole blood clot thing mean? Well, it's pretty darn serious because the portal vein is right in the middle of your liver. It's very hard to get to. It's not something that they can operate on or go in with a stent or do anything like that. They just have to give you meds, which is blood thinner and pain medication to get you through this situation. And so, of course, I'm happier than you can imagine, re more relieved than you can imagine that I actually don't have cancer. But at the same time, I'm trying to think what in the world is gonna happen now. So I got put on blood thinners and was sent home after a day and a half. And then the fun started to happen. So what happened was that pain was there so intensely that it made me really, really sick and I couldn't eat and I just couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, I ended up dropping probably about 15 pounds that first two weeks because I just, I couldn't eat hardly anything. Well, it seemed like the more weight that I dropped, the sicker I got. And what would happen is when I would eat, I would just be so sick that there was just eating like two bites at a time. I was subsisting on juice mostly because juice didn't hurt. And I was doing very soft foods, trying not to eat anything, you know, really heavy and trying to figure out at the same time what in the world is going on. So in the interim of all that from November to about May, I guess it was, I dropped about 45 more pounds and I dropped weight fast. It was scary. And I got to the point to where my BMI was so low that they were afraid for me. So I kept telling them, you know, how much pain I was in. They went and took me back in and they did a CAT scan in January, February, February probably. And in February, they said, you know, the portal vein is doing what it's supposed to do. It is bypassing with, with veins going around it. So I don't have a portal vein going through anymore, but I do have veins that are still feeding my vital organs. And kind of like when your heart does bypass on its own. I don't know if any of you have ever researched that, but if you get a clogged artery, the heart will bypass itself before you're even operated on. And then they also said that I had gallbladder um, issues. And they said that they also saw uh, like a shadow on my pancreas. So I'm thinking, what the crap, you know? And, and I've heard such horror stories about people having their gallbladder out and having um, GERD or really bad acid reflux for the rest of their life. And I was just fighting that I did not want that at all because even my husband, after he had his done, he just is miserable and he has not been the same since he had his gallbladder out. So I was definitely fighting that and trying to just think, I don't want to do this. But at the same time, I knew that there was something very, very wrong. I 
did not feel good. I had no energy. I, of course, was not eating hardly anything, and that was part of the problem. But I really was kind of, you know, wasting away and just got thinner and thinner until one day I was in at my GYN and I asked him, you know, I have this pain when I eat and then I have another pain on the other side of my stomach. And he said, you know what, we have a gal here that used to do ultrasounds for the hospital for 11 years. Just let me get her to do it for you really quick. It won't cost you anything. And I was like, oh gosh, that was just so kind of him. So I immediately was like, all right, let's, let's do this thing. So he did that. And when she did that, that this is so funny because I was laying there, you know, and she gets to my gallbladder and she's like, oh my goodness, that is one angry gallbladder. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, you have a ton of gallstones in there. She said, I don't think that this gallbladder could work at all. There are so many. And she said, you not only have a family, the parents and brothers and sisters, you have the aunts, the uncles, the grandparents, everybody in there. You got a gallstone family in there. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Anyway, so I was kind of surprised at all of that. But at the same time, you know, it wasn't too much of a surprise. But she explained to me that when you have gallstones, what happens is every single time you eat, the gallbladder contracts to let a little bit of bile out to help in the digestion. And it can't let it out. So it's painful and it's hitting up against those stones anyway. So you get pain immediately. And that's why I was stopping eating after just one or two bites. And she's like, you've got to get to a doctor immediately. And I was like, okay. So I, I figured that out, but I just kept kind of declining. I couldn't get into a doctor. You know, the old song and dance about you can't get into a doctor for however long, what is it, like two weeks, three weeks, or a month, depending on the doctor, and depending on the specialist and the field, of course, this is general surgery. Well, my GYN, he was on it because he realized how diseased the gallbladder was, and he called up that surgeon, and he said, you need to at least get her seen. So I was seen in a week, which was really nice, and then they were going to schedule my surgery for two weeks out. And when they called me to schedule the surgery for two weeks out, which was another week, so this is sometime in July, another week in July, and um, they said, how about, you know, this day? And it was like three weeks off. And I was like, okay, well, if he doesn't have anything sooner, that's fine. Well, what had happened, curiously enough, is like the night before, I almost had my husband take me into the emergency room for the gallbladder pain and I was just not doing well. I said to that nurse that was doing my intake or scheduling my surgery, I said, what should I do between now and then if I have a really bad attack like that because I almost went last night. She said, well, I don't really know. I would definitely, if you're in tremendous pain, go ahead and go to the emergency room, but I'll talk to the doctor and we'll let you know what he says that you should do. So that was on a Tuesday, I think, maybe a Wednesday. And I got a call back from her that afternoon and she said, Melissa, doctor wants to see if you will be okay with being operated on on Friday. So I had two days to prepare for this. And of course, at first I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I'm like, you know what? It, it's better because I can't continue to live in this kind of pain. And even from the time that I first saw the doctor until then, that two weeks, I'd lost another five pounds. So I was just like, this is insane. This is absolutely insane how much weight I was losing. So decided, yes, I'm going to go ahead with it. And my husband was like, absolutely. I am so glad because he was just so worried about me in this kind of pain. Oh my goodness, that's orange. No, 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 can't do that. Okay, we'll put a little bit over here, but we are not going to do orange. Okay, that one is way too orange. Can't do that. Get that off the brush. Okay, let's do this one. This is the good apple one from KVD Beauty. And it has a contour and a bronzer on one side. So I just mixed these together and it seems to be really good. Where was I? So went ahead with the surgery, got in there. And sure enough, just an absolute ton of stones. And it was not looking good. 
And so woke up really sick. I get really sick from anesthesia. Do any of you? I just had a really hard time and I tried to tell them before I went in that I get really sick from anesthesia, but I don't know if they just didn't believe me or what the deal was, but ended up really sick. But I did get to come home that day. They did it laparoscopically and I did get to come home that day, which is really great. Um, glad that I didn't have to stay, stay in the hospital overnight. You never get any rest. So let me tell you, when I started my journey on my weight loss, I weighed 305 pounds. When I went in for surgery that day, I weighed 139 pounds. So I had lost approximately, what is that, 165 pounds, something like that, throughout all of this. So I've lost more, of, I've lost almost a whole person when you look at it that way. And yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. And at the same time, I didn't want to lose any more weight because I'd lost enough and needed to stop completely. And so, yeah, that's where that is. So now I am, as of probably when I put this video up, it's probably four weeks since I had my surgery and I'm able to eat and I'm doing so good. I did gain about five pounds right off the bat and I've kind of stabilized that out. So that's good. I was able to gain a little bit of weight and been able to keep food down. I do have to take nausea pills right now, which I've been told ha can happen quite a lot. And so I'm okay with that as long as I can eat and, you know, get the nutrition that I need and feel better. And I cannot believe how much energy I have now, how much I feel better than I have felt in years. Apparently ever since 2019, when I had my weight loss surgery, immediately when you lose that kind of weight, you do start having gallbladder issues. I didn't know that. And every time I go into the doctor, they wouldn't even put their finger on that until last November when they did see a few stones. And then when I dropped a lot of weight from being in pain from the blood clot, then it even was worse. And so, yes, I was a mess inside there apparently and really needed some relief. It's been such a nice feeling to be able to not only just eat, but to be able to you know, do my chores around the house and take care of the business or take care of YouTube and been able to upload. And I just feel so much better. I can't even begin to tell you. So that was what has been happening. I feel better. I'm hoping that I don't gain a lot of the weight back. I'd like to sit at about, I'm 5'7", I'm so I'd like to sit at about 145 to 150 pounds. Um, that's a really good weight for me. It's a healthy weight for me. But I also wanted to talk to you about something that happened to me while I was losing weight. And this was scary because I know that a lot of you have heard of muscle wasting. And that happens a bit when you have um, weight loss surgery anyway, but it didn't happen to me until I lost that second about 40 pounds when I got really sick because I wasn't taking any nutrition in, so I wasn't building any muscle. My body was starving and it was eating all of my muscles, which if you know anything about this, your heart's a muscle too. So it's gonna eat that, it's gonna, you're gonna have a hard, hard time. So that's why they were so scared for me with everything that was going on. Through all that, I was losing so much weight that I could tell from my skin. My skin has dropped dramatically right here um, and my jowls, it's really dropped. I have a lot of wrinkles in there that's hard for you to see on camera, but I see it and I notice it. The other thing that I you probably have noticed is I've got hollows at my temples now where my the fat used to be and I have no fat there anymore. Even my eyes look a little bit sunken in. I've noticed that I don't have hooded eyes at all anymore, which, you know, is a nice thing, but at the same time, it's not something you want your face to do is drop and lose all of its volume because then you just look older because you don't have any plumpness to your skin. It was a very hard road and it was a very hard thing to realize that all that stuff was happening because it just happened so quickly um, in those few months so it was probably four months and I had lost all this volume in my face and even some of you were commenting on that my face was looking a little bit drawn which I agree with you it was looking a little bit drawn but it is hard when you're sick like that to you know put your finger on things and not have things affect you and it was hard to hear that even though I knew that you were all right as you were concerned but it's hard when you're 
battling and knowing that I just don't feel good. I'm going to try this RMS. This is Beach Walk Betty. This is her bronzer. I saw this on Jen Phelps channel. It's so pretty. I don't know what it's going to look like on me, but I'm going to try just a little bit on top here of everything else. That's pretty. It looks really pretty. Lip liner from Juvia's Place. This I can't do and talk at the same time. So I'm going to do this off camera. And then two weeks after I had my surgery, I moved my elderly mom who's 88 in with us. She is now living with us and which is really nice. I get to spend time with my mom and I'm just hoping that her health holds out for a while so we get to have some quality time together. And um, my son that you keep asking about, he does still live here with me as well. He is still going through all of his health issues and he has not had his surgeries yet. We are dealing with bureaucratic nonsense with the state aid here. Um, he has type one diabetes and he has not been for probably three years below 8.0 on the A1C chart. That is high for a diabetic, but there is a rule in one of the hospitals where he's supposed to have his shoulder operated on that it has to be below eight. And he's tried and tried and tried and he cannot get that down. It is partly because he's in pain all the time. And so now we're still dealing with these doctors that just don't want to listen to what we have to say about, we know what's going on. We know that this is one of those things that is acute until you get him out of pain until that gets operated on his number is not going to come down but you can't tell people that you can't go and say that kind of stuff to just about anybody because in general the world deals with type 2 diabetics and they don't realize that a type 1 diabetic is like this all the time up and down with the numbers i go low i have to eat and then i go high and i spike and it's like that well, if my son was able to get a pump, which he's not because again, bureaucratic nonsense in the state, it would be way better. My daughter has a pump. My other son that has diabetes, he's also getting, and I don't know if you all know this or not, but all three of my children have diabetes. Hello, I'm the diabetes guru and let me tell you why. I have three children that have type 1 diabetes I've been dealing with for 30 years. I also have a husband that has type 2 diabetes and he developed that after I married him. Let's see, we're going on 12 years now. And this year, my dog got diabetes and went blind. So I am the diabetes guru. Thankfully, I don't have it myself, but I know a heck of a lot about all kinds of diabetes and I keep trying to tell these people, listen to what I'm saying until you get him out of pain his number is not going to come down well we're fighting and fighting fighting this is going on three years now and it absolutely makes me crazy that you can't just say to a doctor please just you know listen to what I have to say and you know I've been dealing with this for years Mitch has been operated on before and we had this same issue now Washington State I live in Utah now Washington State was a little bit easier they finally went ahead with it but Utah won't do it and I'm just at my wits end <laughs> I don't know what to do to help him it's one of those things where you're just the mother now this look is weird because I've got a little bit of purple on my eyes and I've got this kind of a crimson pinkish color on my lips but I guess I'll have to just deal with it. And I think the only way to counter it is to take some icy color right there. I'm gonna pop this in the middle. What that immediately does is changes the tone of it a little bit. I'll put some more lip oil on from Kosas. I think this might look a little bit better once I get my mascara on too. So that's what's going on there. My husband is still working. He is a truck driver, still doing good. His health is holding up. Thank goodness we have one person in the family whose health is actually holding up. The man is a rock. I'm telling you, I love this man to pieces. He is amazing. And yeah, he has gotten me through so much in my lifetime. I can't even begin to tell you what this man has done for me. Look at the difference in those two eyes. I, this is the Milani, uh, the waterproof one mascara. I have never tried this before. I have been sweating my mascara off lately. So I really wanted to try one. Last step, I wanted to try the new Morphe. This isn't new. Morphe Continuous Prep and Set Mist, supercharged with ceramides and antioxidants. So this is not supposed to dry out your skin like the original did. And I love the mist on this anyway. So this should melt 
all of that makeup together. Alrighty, darling friends, that is my life update where I'm at for now. I am really hoping to start getting more videos out. My channel tanked last year as far as views and all of you that return over and over again to my videos you're my stability and i appreciate it so much and you have kept me afloat but honestly as other people were gaining new followers and getting these high views my channel was tanking because i just couldn't keep up so i'm hoping now that my health is better that i'll be able to do more content for you content that really you like and that you want so if there's anything that you would really like to see like i did get a really good suggestion yesterday about doing a video on the difference in foundations and skin tints and etc etc so that was a really great suggestion i would love to hear what kind of content you would like to hear from me down in the comment section because you guys you're the reason i'm here and if you don't like what i'm doing then i'm really nothing so i really want to hear from you and see what you think thanks for being with me today thanks for sticking by me through all of this mess Fingers crossed that we're gonna have a better time from here on in. My thoughts and prayers are with all of you that have any sort of illness or any sort of disability because I have been there and I understand how difficult it is to carry on and forge ahead. And so I just wanna tell you how much I appreciate that you come to my channel and take a few minutes and spend with me. So love you all very much. Please take care of yourselves and come and see me in my next video. Take care. Bye friends.